Welcome, my name is Heidi Berggren. In this lesson, my colleague Shannon Jenkins and I will examine how to use quantitative data to study the role played by gender in a variety of social, economic, and political phenomena. I will first go over how to locate data. Second, Professor Jenkins will use an example from political science to demonstrate in detail how to analyze this kind of data. The process of locating data can be broken down into three steps or stages. First, searching for data, where you locate databases, construct search terms, and run searches. Second, determining whether or not the resulting data really is what you're looking for. And third, downloading the data into spreadsheet and other data analysis programs. We will review three important sources of social science data and will conduct some sample downloads. It is very important to keep in mind that there are many, many possible sources of data. This lesson is intended simply to get you started. You should talk to professors in your area of interest about additional places to get data. The U.S. Census Bureau was originally instituted to provide a complete count of all residents in the United States. In the process of fulfilling this constitutional requirement, the Census Bureau has evolved into a comprehensive source of data about the U.S. population. It is easy to obtain data on the number of individuals and households, broken down by race, gender, income, and other characteristics. Such data is available for the whole country, or at the level of individual states, counties, and cities. In addition to aggregated information about individuals and households, there are also surveys on the economy and other aspects of society. Census Bureau data is widely used in studies concerning gender. We'll take a brief look at the site and at the variety of options available for downloading data. Later in the lesson, I will illustrate the process of downloading. The process is quite similar across different sources. You can see the different surveys that are available, and it might seem difficult to know where to start. So we can look under Subjects, and then W. Let's take Women in the United States. Here is a detailed description of the numerous studies containing data on gender. In some instances, the connection to gender is self-evident, as in the case of the Women-Owned Business Survey. However, sometimes the connection to gender is there but is not explicit from the descriptions themselves. For example, these two surveys here contain data on families and households' usage of welfare, child care, and other public assistance programs. Most single-parent families are headed by women, and many of them are poor. If you are interested in women and welfare, these surveys likely contain relevant data. American Fact Finder also allows you to download tables of aggregated demographic data broken down by gender and by state, county, and city. In addition to American Fact Finder, there are other data access tools. The Bureau of Justice Statistics is part of the U.S. Department of Justice and has a wealth of data on all aspects of crime, justice, and gender. This data is easy to search and to download. A good deal of the data is downloadable in Excel spreadsheet format. Here is the BJS homepage. Let's take a look under Data Collections, Topics, and Victims. Take, for example, the first study, the City-Level Survey of Crime Victimization and Citizen Attitudes. 
You can download the series of studies into a spreadsheet. There are, there are numerous surveys, but let's just select one for the purposes of illustration. Returning to our list of studies, you can see the other surveys on victims. The National Crime Victimization Survey is a particularly large and comprehensive study. The Data Analysis Tools tab makes the process of accessing and downloading data very easy. It lists the same topics as before, but let's just click on Topic. This takes us to an index of crime and justice spreadsheets from studies in all of the topic areas, which can then be searched and downloaded. The next item is crime trends from the FBI's Uniform Crime Reports. This is a powerful yet user-friendly way of accessing and downloading crime trend data. There are different ways of locating and downloading this data. Geographic area, type of crime, and year. Let's look at the violent, violent crime rate in Massachusetts from 1960 to 2007. Here is the table. This column shows the overall violent crime rate, and the other columns contain yearly rates for specific types of violent crime, including forcible rape. If you want to download this table, click Spreadsheet of this table. And there it is. The Interuniversity Consortium for Political and Social Research is the world's largest online archive of social science data for use in research in a variety of fields and contains many data sets that can also be located in the other sources we looked at earlier. If you have questions, you can ask me. I happen to be the official representative at this university. Here is the home page. The My Data link in the upper left-hand portion of the screen will enable you to create an account and to log in. You must have an account to download data, so make sure to create an account for yourself by following the instructions. There are many different ways to search for data. Given that we want to locate data about gender, we will look at Browse by Topic. There are two ways of locating studies that are relevant to a particular topic, Topic Classifications and Thesaurus. When looking at the Topic Classifications, it's notable that the only subtopic that specifically mentions gender is Family and Gender, right here, under one of the last main topics, Social Institutions and Behavior. This leads to a list of 100 plus studies, which may or may not be the most efficient way to search for data, depending on your interests and your academic field. We know that gender is an important variable across many topics. So maybe it would make more sense to search in the A through Z subject thesaurus. If we look under G, We can find many potentially useful entries. There's gender, gender identity, gender, gender issues, and more. We can also look under W for women. Here we see women, women in development, women's health care. Let's look under women's movement. Here we see the power and advantage of using the thesaurus. 
women's movement is listed along with related terms that can be searched as well, such as women's rights. Clicking on search, search for this term turns up a list of data sources referencing women's rights. There are different ways to sort the studies. Let's sort by newest to oldest time period. You can see the variety of studies here. Some of them are on public opinion, voting and elections, women in leadership, and more. I am going to download data from this study here on Women in Parliament as a way of demonstrating the process of downloading into the Data Analysis Software Package SPSS. This program allows for more statistical analysis options than Excel and is commonly used throughout the social sciences. The first task before downloading data is to make sure that the study actually contains the data that you want. So let's take a look at the date at the study description. Here you can see a useful summary as well as other information about the survey. The quick download option happens to be available. So let's choose this option. Before downloading, you always need to agree to the terms of use. This essentially means that you will use the data only for the purposes of research and will not compromise the privacy or the confidentiality of survey respondents. So let's click I agree. Then you open with WinZip. Some of the files are very large. Now, which of these many different files you will need depends on the statistics package that you are using and the version that you have. In most instances, you will need only a small number of the files that you see listed. The codebook and the study description are always important. The codebook has crucial information and details about the cases and variables that make up the survey. Without the codebook, you would not be able to make sense of the data file. Second, you will need the data file itself. In this case, we are using SPSS, so we will select the data.save file. The suffix .sav is what identifies this as an SPSS data file. SAS is another package, so you would want to take a close look at the SAS files here if that is what you are using. I already have the file open. But what you do next is extract or pull the data file to your chosen location. You should already have SPSS open. So then you go to the file menu and you click open data file. And then you would keep clicking on the folder with the string of numbers on it. All ICPSR studies have numbers. So you click until you see the data or the .sav file. Open, and there you have your data file. In the data view, you can see the variable names at the top of the columns and the case numbers at the start of each row. Each box comprising the data matrix represents a certain case's value or score on a certain variable. This concludes the locating social science data portion of the lesson. I now turn things over to my colleague, Professor Jenkins, who will demonstrate how to analyze data.